Hello and welcome to this Witness History podcast from the BBC World Service with me, Rebecca Kesby. And today we're heading for Rua in rural Zimbabwe. The year is 1994 and it's an extraordinary story, possibly from another world. A mass sighting of an unidentified flying object or UFO. And even more unnerving, the eyewitnesses who say they saw, well, aliens. A BBC team was in the area in September 94 and captured statements from the scene, which we revisit today. There's been a UFO alert across southern Africa. A large, brightly coloured object was seen travelling very fast above Zimbabwe, Zambia and South Africa. Several planes saw it. The experts are baffled. Okay, this is a continuation of UFO, possible UFO story. Rua, Ariel School, 19th September, 94, 12.12, local time. In mid-September 1994, BBC Zimbabwe correspondent Tim Leach and his TV crew got sent on an unusual story. Tell me, what are they saying in Mbari about this unidentified flying object? They are saying that Jesus is uh, is passing through Africa. They don't think it's a meteor? No, they don't think so. (laughs) It's one of the most widely reported UFO sightings of the past 50 years, and yet it's relatively unknown outside Africa. We thought it was a helicopter at first, and um, when we actually paid attention to it, we realised it was a sort of big bright light at the front, and then a dimmer light somewhere in the middle and somewhere at the back, and then what seemed to be sort of smudgy, smaller lights linking it, cigar-type shape, a long shape. But I say it's, it's a scary thing to say you saw a UFO. <laughs> well, the authorities are taking the sightings very seriously. Leon van Renberg is the tower controller at Jan Smuts Airport in Johannesburg. He says pilots were baffled. They could see a meteor-type object in the sky that was flying from a northwesterly to a southeasterly direction. Some of the pilots even reported a warning on their TCAS system in the cockpit, traffic collision avoidance system, but before they could even see this object. It was spotted by several aircraft around about the same time and also later on we received reports from Zimbabwean and Zambian air traffic controllers that they also received reports from air crew that could see this uh, bright thing in the sky. Several people across the region reported seeing strange lights in the sky and what seemed to be some kind of craft, but moving in a way that no human-made plane or helicopter can. Okay, take two. Can you just tell us what happened the other night at Kariba? Well, we suddenly looked up and we saw this thing coming over the top of the hill. At first sight, maybe seeing a a fuselage of an aircraft uh, because it seemed to light up as it moved over. As it sort of came abreast of us, it suddenly changed from this glow to, let's say, two big red-orange balls. Again, first thought was um, an Airbus 300 with the the two engines. But then one thing we noticed about it was the, the lack of sound. In total, I would say about 14 people saw this in our group anyway. But what makes this story even more strange is not just the number of witnesses from different countries or the pilot testimonies or the air traffic controller's concerns, but the number of eyewitness accounts of what can only be described as aliens. Um, I feel sure that the children feel that they did see something. I don't believe or disbelieve to be perfectly honest but I do feel that they definitely saw something we had a number of children say they did what do you think that was I agree that it could be something that we um, are not common with but to actually say that it was a UFO I would be uh, reluctant to make a decision like that I personally did not see it Colin Mackey he was the principal teacher at Ariel Elementary School in the quiet rural town of Rua in Zimbabwe It was just another ordinary sunny day as the children charged out into the playground for their morning break, unaware of the reported drama in the skies above them. Girls and boys, aged between 8 and 11, and from a mixture of backgrounds and ethnicities. But around 60 of them say they saw exactly the same thing. A spaceship. Well, it looked like it was, like, glinting in the trees. Like a disc. Like a round... And and you say it looked like a disc? Are you sure it wasn't a... A Harrier jump jet or a, an aircraft, no, something that the Zimbabwe it, Air Force had got? It was like in a, in a disc. 
It, it was just glinting in the trees. And we were in the classroom and I ran out and I saw it. They, I did think they were UFOs. I did see them. The children said they were drawn to something shiny in the long grasses at the edge of the playing field that led into the wild African bush. I saw something silver on the ground amongst the trees. It looked like a saucer, but the shape wasn't really round. And, and I saw this, this silver thing in, in amongst this clump of, of trees with this one thing sitting on, on the side and another thing sort of like running up and down the, the top. Many of the children reported seeing figures, not much taller than they were themselves, standing on or around the craft. I saw the little black men. They, were, they had long, longish hair and it was all black. They kind of turned around and stared and then went back into a kind of like ship. There was like sort of one big one with quite a few little ones scattered around. Yes, it was very, very shiny black kind of suit. It was tight-fitting. I just thought it was some kind of alien from a different planet. Um, well, we saw some people. There was a white one, a red one, and a black one. And the black one was sitting on the spaceship. And this, like, there was a man, and he walked towards us, and he walked back again. And what does he look like? His, his face was like this, and his eyes were down here. Here, the children are holding up their hands to their faces to show the size and shape of the being's eyes. Like rugby balls, they say, their fingers tracing big oval shapes, starting high on their foreheads and circling low onto their cheeks. And they had big black eyes. That's all I saw. Well, I saw um, a silver, silver thing, and I saw a black man. He, he was dressed in black and he had big eyes. Show me with your hand how big the eyes they were. They were shaped like something like that. Oval, kind of like that. Mr Mackey asked the children to draw pictures of what they'd seen. They vary in quality, but the details and proportions are strikingly similar. A dome-shaped disc on three sticks or legs nestling under the trees. It's worth remembering that at the time, Zimbabwe had no internet and barely any TV. These were country children living a simple life, but of course we can't know what images of UFOs they may have already been exposed to before. These are photocopies of the actual originals. Right. Did it make any noise, this thing? Not really, no. And then what happened? And then he walked towards us and he walked back again and they just went. How? How did they go? It just went all of a sudden. What, like a helicopter? No, went up? Just, just went. And then it didn't come back again. And did you girls see that as well? Yes. I saw them, I saw them disappear. They went one metre up from the ground and then they just disappeared. Parents and teachers wanted to be sceptical, but the children were so convincing and so consistent. And besides, adults in the area had also seen strange events in the sky. So what, what did you see? I just uh, saw a glow over my chicken run, a very orange glow. I've never seen something like that there before. I stared at it. It was a helicopter or No, no, it was just a big round wall. The bottom was flat, but it was round. He just said these people came towards him on the road. He said they look like dead people. Oh, my God. Okay. He said it was like a spirit. And it came towards him, and he tried to avoid it. He swerved this way, and he, he ditched his truck, and he's got a big cut on his head and whatever. Later, the head of the psychiatry department at Harvard Medical School, John E. Mack, also arrived to speak to the children. His interviews with them reveal another element, that some of the children say they received some sort of message from the beings about the environment and protecting the Earth. What I thought was maybe the, the world's going to end, maybe they're telling us the world's going to end, because um, we, maybe because we, never, we don't look after the planet and the area properly. I just felt all horrible inside. Say more about that horrible feeling, Lisa. What was it like? It was like in the world, all the trees will just go down and, and there will be no air and people will be dying. Enthusiasts say the Ruhr School UFO sighting remains one of the most significant events in recent UFO history because of the consistency of the eyewitness accounts. For decades, witness statements such as these have been treated with high levels of scepticism and disbelief. 
But the US military has started to take videos and eyewitness reports of mysterious flying objects more seriously. Perhaps more stories from the past, like Ruhr, will soon be re-examined. This is Rebecca Kesby for the Witness History Podcast from the BBC World Service.